Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. There's a new credit card on the market called the Ness Credit Card that we're going to take a look at in this video. Now, the Ness Credit Card is positioning itself as sort of an alternative to the higher-end travel credit cards that we're so used to on the market, things like the American Express Platinum, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, etc. Those kind of cards are going to have higher annual fees, but then they're also going to have a lot of travel credits, travel rewards, travel redemptions. The Nest card is uh, positioning itself as sort of the alternative that is offering health and wellness rewards and health and wellness credits and redemption. So we are going to uh, break it down here in this video. Sort of an interesting concept. It'll be interesting to see if it flies. The Nest credit card is a MasterCard credit card that is actually what we sometimes think of as a charge card, meaning that you have to pay off your full balance each month. You cannot rotate the balance from one month to the next. $349 annual fee. In terms of everyday rewards, you're getting five points per dollar on health and wellness purchases, health and wellness merchants, and then you're getting two points per dollar on everything else. Those five point per dollar merchants kind of run the gamut. They have a bunch of examples on their website, but they even say that if you have a health and wellness purchase that you know they haven't already included, you could let them know and they would t check that out and potentially give you the five points per dollar on that as well. So you'll see on their website things like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, Sweet Green, Chipotle, there are uh, sort of healthy meal delivery things like HelloFresh and Butcher Box. You've got um, some vitamin and supplements retailers in there and even things like um, Ninja and Vitamix on the uh, kitchen appliances. And so they have a bunch of different retailers there, but they're open to others falling into that category as well. And then again, two points per dollar on everything else. The points you earn on this card are going to be worth a penny per point, and you are going to be redeeming for health and wellness and what I might consider lifestyle uh, rewards as well. And so you've got things like Chipotle and Warby Parker and Sweet Green and a lot of things sort of on the lower end. And they've got Spa Fine and what is it beyond yoga I think and then the whole home gym and the thing where you can have your body scanned for potential uh, diseases that you should be looking out for so we're going from sort of the everyday to the very high end in terms of health and wellness redemptions. The new card holder bonus opportunity on this card, 50,000 points worth $500 in value when you redeem if you spend $6,000 with the card in the first 90 days of having it. Now you have two main credits on this card. Actually, one of them is a credit and the other one is sort of an extra bonus opportunity that I think are central toward the sort of value proposition, how you feel about this card versus the annual fee that you are paying for it. And the first of those is an up to $200 statement credit on health and wellness purchases. If you're gonna get a card like this, you're probably gonna max that out. You're gonna spend over $200 at health and wellness merchants like the ones we just talked about. So that is probably one that you are going to get in full. The second of them is an up to 20,000 point reward for your uh, health and wellness activities throughout the year. So you can get up to 56 points per day for doing certain health and wellness activities like 30 minutes or more of physical exercise, seven hours or more of sleep, and there's some other things there as well. Now, as far as I can tell, that's being tracked by Apple Health, which can be through your iPhone or through an Apple Watch. I don't know if there's an Android equivalent there that might uh, track things or whether this is only going to work on the Apple side. But anyway, if you did at least your 56 points worth of activities every single day, you could max out that 20,000 point reward, which would be $200 worth of reward. So $200 credit potentially, $200 in extra rewards. You've got a $349 annual fee. So if you're maxing both of those out, that could go a long way toward you feeling okay about that annual fee. Now, there are a lot of other potential credits on this card. I think they are a little less sort of central to the value proposition, and maybe they sort of coincide a little bit or something that you could compare to what the Amex Platinum does a little bit, where there are a lot of credits that are nice to have, but maybe you wouldn't pay for them normally. There's a lot of that going on on this card too. So some of them are gonna be credits, some of them are gonna be more like coupons. So you have a $15 statement credit that you can earn twice a month for every $75 that you spend at Sweetgreen. You've got a $100 uh, seed 
statement credit that you can get. Seed being a probiotics uh, retailer, there's $300 or up to $300 for Parsley Health, which is sort of an online telehealth medical platform that is supposed to be very personalized, which is not particularly cheap. It's over $2,000 a year. You've got $100 for uh, something called Higher Dose, which is wellness tech products. I'm not familiar with a lot of these retailers that are on here. You've got up to uh, $200 credit for uh, fight personal training sessions. Find your trainer is what FYT stands for. And then you've got a bunch of others there as well. So the question is, how do you value these? Are these things that you would normally use? Are they nice to haves? Are they things that, well, I wouldn't pay for them, but as part of this overall package, I'd be willing to pay $349 for it because I like a lot of the other things going on and these are extras that I feel good about. By now you may have gotten the idea that a lot of this is higher end stuff and it definitely feels like the Nest credit card is targeting a uh, demographic that has a lot of disposable income, people that are into health and wellness. Obviously feels a little bit like a Silicon Valley crowd. They might be targeting at least initially people that are into health and wellness and like the idea of sort of using tech as a way to come up with solutions to uh, everyday health as well as longevity. Living longer is a thing that a lot of money is being poured into in Silicon Valley. So the question is, how many of those people are there overall and how many of those people would be willing to get a credit card like this or like this as sort of almost like a membership package you could think of it as as well. So that will be sort of the big question for this card. Other things to know about the Nest credit card, it has no foreign transaction fees, so you're not going to get charged anything extra when you use it outside of the United States. It is a metal credit card, green, gold, stainless steel, they say, which sounds like something I have not seen before necessarily, but if metal matters to you, you're going to have it here. This is a card issued in partnership with the Bank of Missouri, which is a bank that uh, works with a lot of smaller fintech companies and credit card marketers, so you may be familiar with that name as I make this video. This is a card that you have to be invited to apply for. You can ask to be invited. So they're calling it a public beta right now. I'm sure they want to control how many people come in so they can kind of see how things go over time. But probably you could get your hands on it fairly quickly if you're willing to pay that $349 annual fee. The timing of the Nest credit card launch is sort of interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, the Paceline Visa, which is a credit card that was offering a lot of similar things to this card recently had to shut down because they lost their issuing bank partner. I don't know if they're going to come back. They're acting like they still may come back, but for now they are off the market and they are offering a wait list on their website, but who knows when or if we will see them again. So that obviously would be a good thing for Ness in this instance. And then the second thing is the overall economy. Is this a good time for Ness to be getting into a market with a card that has a $349 annual fee from a company that people don't know. It's not with a major issuer. And even in these sort of tech centers, we're getting layoffs from, uh, you know, Facebook and Amazon and a lot of other places. So it is not necessarily a time where people are as flush with cash maybe as they were in the uh, recent past. So we'll see if that makes any difference to them as well. But overall with this card, the everyday rewards are good. If you feel like you can make use of a lot of those credits that could go a long way towards justifying that annual fee. How you feel about the redemptions obviously plays in. You can't get cash back. You can only use it for certain health and wellness and lifestyle rewards. How do you feel about that when you look at this card? And then obviously, how do you feel about health and wellness rewards in general versus other credit cards out there on the market? Like I said at the beginning, it will be interesting to see if this credit card flies, but I think it's an interesting alternative on the market to the premium credit cards that like Ness says, mostly are travel focused. So something different here. Would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews. We talk personal finance, we talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you are not going to go to the website or leave a comment, you might want to watch this video next.